Street Worship. I'm Reverend Jen Logston Kellogg. This is Reverend Sarah P. Montgomery. We're so happy to be worshiping with you this morning. We're still meeting virtually. Uh, we we just figured out that Oklahoma is like number four on the Yay. highest number of cases of COVID. <laughs> At least there's three above us. <laughs> right. Uh, not a competition that we want to be no, in. We don't want to be number one. So we are still wearing our masks when we're at the church. Um, there, are, You can come to the church by appointment only. We are offering everything that we can virtually. We are doing ministry. We are not closed, but we are limiting our contact in person for sure. So uh, we would love for you to continue to worship with us virtually. We'll keep you updated on when we have opportunities to be in person. You're not missing out if you think you're the only one sitting at home watching us on (laughs) Facebook, right? So this is a worshiping community that wrestles with what we believe and we want to be challenged and we invite people who are not even Christians to be a part of our worship service. Mm -hmm. And you get to participate to whatever level you feel comfortable. So in all the things that we do, in the prayers, in communion, um, if you feel like you want to engage, even if you're not sure what you believe, you're invited to do so. If you want to sit back and take it in and kind of think about what you think about all this, do that. And then if you want to talk to us about it, we're available for that. Mm -hmm. If you would, register your attendance. Let us know that you're worshiping with us. And during worship, use the comments to to interact and to talk. Um, Reverend Sarah and I will be online Um, in two places at once, both worshiping and um, leading worship. We also invite you to give if you are able and willing to support the ministries of the church with your finances. You just text B-A-U-M-C to the number on the screen and there you can set up either recurrent giving or one-time giving and you can choose whether to support the general fund of the church or to support specific ministries. And like Reverend Jen said, we do have some wonderful ministries that are happening online, and we wanted to make sure that you knew about some of those small groups that are just starting up right now. And so we have a um, class that will be on Monday nights with Eva Marie Campbell. If you are looking at being able to think about your faith in the midst of a midlife time frame, so you can sign up for that with her. There'll be two Bible studies that will be on Thursdays, and so um, you can look at that once during the day and once in the evening time. And then I'll be leading a class on Wednesday nights on learning about the Enneagram as a spiritual practice. And so if you'd like to be able to join any of those classes, we'd love to be able to help connect you to those teachers so you can comment below or send one of us a message or, you know, just be able to call the church and we'll be able to get you connected to that class. And the beauty of being online is that you can do it from anywhere. So you don't even have to be in Tulsa or Oklahoma. You can be a part of these classes from wherever you are. So we really invite you to continue to grow with us. For worship today, we are continuing to have our time of communion, so we invite you to be able to have something that would represent um, juice or kind of have the represent the blood of Christ. You can have juice or wine or water, you know, whatever it is that would be that representation for you, and then something for the body of Christ. So we've been emphasizing donuts, bagels, crackers, pancakes. Ooh, that's a new one. I love <laughs> it. So pancakes, biscuits. We know somebody has some cinnamon rolls every time they worship with us together. Um, just remember that whatever it is that you do have, just take out enough that you will fully consume it because once we pray over it, it's been blessed by God. And so we don't want to just throw away God's blessings. So we want to fully consume all of God's blessings. So make sure you um, pour out just enough that you'll be able to, to take and receive fully. 
We do want you to know a little bit more about who we are as a church community. And so as a faith community of Boston Avenue, here are our core values that will help be able to explain sort of the the choices that we make in terms of our missions and ministries and the many different things that we do at this congregation. And then we as a worshiping community have our own statement that we say to gather ourselves into worship. And so we invite you to say these words as we gather ourselves in. We are a place to belong for all people, seeking God's love without fear. So let us lift up our voices in song as we gather and worship and praise God. during this next song, we'd invite you to be able to enter into a time of prayer. If you have a candle at your home that you'd like to light, you can light that candle or you can comment below with any prayer requests that you'd like to share with our whole community. So let us sing and pray to God. Nothing can compare, you're our living. 
living hope, your present hands for me. I've tasted and seen the sweetest of love, where my heart becomes free and my shame is undone. Your glory, God, is what our hearts long for, to be overcome by your presence, Lord. Your presence, Lord. I've tasted and seen of the sweetest of love, where my heart becomes free. And my shame is undone. Your presence, Lord. Holy Spirit, you are welcome here. Come flood this place and fill the atmosphere. Your glory, God, is what our hearts long for. To be overcome in your Let us pray together. God, we come this morning a people that are dispersed, that have been separated from each other and from this community for so long. And we come just yearning for newness. We wish that we were together again, singing together, being able to share communion together, being able to hold each other's hands, being able to grieve alongside one another and to celebrate each other's joys together. But we know that this season, even though it is very hard, that it's a season and that a new thing, a new thing that you are doing will be sprouting up all around us. So as we pray to you, we pray that you will continue to hold that grief. That you will continue to hold anxiety and fear. That you will continue to hold the hard times of patience. And that you will continue to hold this feeling of disconnection open up within our own hearts the new ways that you are inviting us into being your beloved community. The new ways of connecting with one another. The new ways of journeying alongside each other. The new ways of supporting one another so that we can always be reminded that we are not alone. We remember a time when our nation grieved collectively as we were remembering September 11th this past weekend. 
And so we hold up together that collective grief and we hold up that individual grief as well as we come this day holding both collective and individual grief. God, allow us to be able to have the words that we need to have to be able to support, to care for, and to direct each other towards the hope that is in you. It's in your name that we pray together the prayer that Christ first taught us. Our creator who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Hey y'all, this is Reverend Sarah P. Montgomery with Boston Avenue United Methodist Church. We've been so excited about all of the wonderful missions that are happening and that have been going on this summer through Base Camp on the Go and our Blood Drive and just some other wonderful things that are occurring. So, so we wanted to make sure that you saw some of those in action. So you'll be seeing a couple of videos over the next couple of weeks, but this one's able to show you a little bit about our blood drive that happened on August 16th and to look towards another one that will happen sometime in January. And then being able to see some about our partnership over at Vernon AME and kind of what's happening with that ministry of being able to be a part of feeding folks and being able to reach out and love to the, the folks in North Tulsa and to our wider Tulsa community as well. And then to be able to see some friends over at our Exodus House, so with our Criminal Justice and Mercy Ministries program. They were so excited to get the baskets of love and even put them within the publicity that they have going out to other folks. So we hope that you'll enjoy these clips and we'll be able to be inspired by the missions that are happening and the ways that we are all being a part of sharing and of spreading God's love in the world. If you'd like to be a part of it, just let me know and comment below and we'll get you connected with some missions. So we've been asking y'all for grocery sacks and here's how many are at Vernon AME now because of you. Just your couple of sacks makes a big, big difference. We got some Boston Avenue volunteers working at God Provides Ministry. And then Becky's up there. Hi, Becky. Hello. Hey, I give blood to save three lives at one time. Yay, yay. I give blood because it's a good way to help other people. Number one, blood is always needed everywhere for a lot of reasons. Number two, I've had a family health situation where the availability of blood was critical. So I've got it. I can give it away. It don't cost anything. All right. Well, we're here with the American Red Cross. Uh, we're holding the blood drive, and I give blood because it's so important for those of us who are able and healthy uh, to share some blood. It saves lives. It helps people in treatment and in emergencies. So uh, in this time, we also know the plasma can even help people who have contracted COVID-19. So uh, we've had, what, two or three dozen come down today from the church uh, to give blood. So those pints of blood not only help one people, but often they're able to use the products from a pint to help a variety of people. So uh, that's why we do it. We want to save lives and help others. Thank you so much, Boston Avenue. We are so grateful for all this uh, baskets of love. Uh, this is Tara. She's graduating. She's moving out today. And one of these baskets will be hers and help her in her new home. She's transitioning after coming here in November, November the 4th. So she has done the program. She's been an excellent a resident and I was on my way right now to take her to her new location 
and get her started at Avondale. So these baskets will go to the new residents that will, are due to come in. We have four in August. We have three on the board for September. And we have also some men coming to the Parsonage House. So the Parsonage House holds five men plus the, the manager. And we so much appreciate all of y'all's help. Uh, these baskets of love, I see that these are things that they need that food stamps won't, won't pay for. Thank you so much.
Today's scripture reading comes from Exodus chapter 14, verses 19 to 31. God's messenger, who had been in front of Israel's camp, moved and went behind them. The column of cloud moved from the front and took its place behind them. It stood between Egypt's camp and Israel's camp. The cloud remained there, and when darkness fell, it lit up the night. They didn't come near each other all night. Then Moses stretched out his hand over the sea. The Lord pushed the sea back by a strong east wind all night, turning the sea into dry land. The waters were split into two. The Israelites walked into the sea on dry ground. The waters formed a wall for them on their right hand and on their left. The Egyptians chased them and went into the sea after them, all the Pharaoh's horses, chariots, and cavalry. As morning approached, the Lord looked down on the Egyptian camp from the column of lightning and cloud and threw the Egyptian camp into a panic. The Lord jammed their chariot wheels so that they wouldn't turn easily. The Egyptians said, Let's get away from the Israelites because the Lord is fighting for them against Egypt. Then the Lord said to Moses, Stretch out your hand over the sea so that the water comes back and covers the Egyptians, their chariots, and their cavalry. So Moses stretched out his hand over the sea. At daybreak, the sea returned to its normal depth. The Egyptians were driving toward it, and the Lord tossed the Egyptians into the sea. The waters returned and covered the chariots and the cavalry, Pharaoh's entire army that had followed them into the sea. Not one of them remained. The Israelites, however, walked on dry ground through the sea. The waters formed a wall for them on their right hand and on their left. The Lord rescued Israel from the Egyptians that day. Israel saw the Egyptians dead on the seashore. Israel saw the amazing power of the Lord against the Egyptians. The people were in awe of the Lord, and they believed in the Lord and in his, the Lord's servant Moses. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. We are continuing our series on Exodus that we're calling Good Trouble. And this story that we just listened to is one of the places that is the most foundational for all of the Judeo-Christian faiths. Um, and this is an instance of God stirring up some good trouble. Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> There's lots going on in there. So last week we left off with Moses' call narrative and the burning bush. And then we go straight into this, you know, big event of the crossing of the Red Sea, but you got to know that there's some stuff in between that we didn't read. And so, you know, a lot of shows, a lot of times will kind of be like, you know, on the last episode, like here's kind uh -huh. of what happened. So we wanted to tell y'all, what did you miss? And we wanted to do Jefferson style. So what did I miss? What did I miss? <laughs> so, and there's your Hamilton reference. Yay! For today. We, we come back. <laughs> so Jen, what did we miss in between chapter three and chapter 14? There's a good chunk of stuff going on there. So let's talk about what, what do we need to catch folks up on? Well, there is a major, ri major rivalry going on mm -hmm. through those chapters. And there are nine different plagues that uh, God visits on the Egyptians. And Moses is the one that gets the task of running back and forth to Pharaoh saying, God says mm -hmm. that if you don't let us go out into the wilderness, then God's going to do this to you. And yep. Pharaoh says, bring it on. Yeah. And it's like, you know, this challenge back and forth, like, oh, you think you can do this? Well, I can do this and I can do this better. Uh, yeah. Yeah. And there's like, the river turns into blood and there's a plague of frogs, frogs and all of, I mean, it just, it's, it's like over locusts, and over and over. Livestock die. Yeah. And all this destruction. Mm -hmm. And then the last, the biggie, you know, mm -hmm. so there's mm -hmm. all these nine that are like progressively worse. And then the biggie is the Passover. Right. And the Passover is, you know, we still, our Easter celebration comes from uh, mm -hmm. the celebration of the Passover. So this, again, big deal mm -hmm. to um, the foundation of the Christian faith. In the Passover is when God tells Pharaoh, I'm going to kill every one of your oldest sons. And the Hebrews are told to, to slaughter a lamb and smear the blood on the doorpost so that God, the angel of death, will pass, pass over. over and not kill their sons. And that kind of is the last straw. Mm -hmm. um, and because Pharaoh's son dies. Right. Right. And Pharaoh finally recognizes that, oh, maybe this God is somebody that I'm not going to be able to beat. Mm -hmm. 
and tells the Hebrews to get out. Mm -hmm. And then after he told the Hebrews to get out, you know, and was immensely in grief, then kind of realizes, hold on. All my slaves are gone. Right. <laughs> and so that was all my labor. I yeah. can't believe. <laughs> so follows after, you yeah. know, as well. Because otherwise, if Pharaoh had just said, you know, well, go, then we wouldn't have had the Red Sea. Happen. Right. You know, so something happens and Pharaoh then, you know, kind of, I guess, gets his wits about him. <laughs> realizes <laughs> that all of his workers are now gone. And then goes and chases after him. Right. And this whole deal about the pillar of cloud and the pillar mm-hmm. of fire is important. We just kind of jumped in right in the middle there. But so God, God's self is leading the Hebrews out of Egypt and is present with them in the form of a pillar of cloud by day and a pillar of fire by night so that they know where to go. Yeah. And this is this beautiful imagery, you know, of and of what we've kind of been talking about is the that image of God being the one to lead this movement, you know, because mm-hmm. like you were saying a couple of weeks ago that, you know, we might think that it's Charlton Heston. You right. know, that's, that's how we see it within the movies is it's more of the, the character of Moses that is elevated the most. Right. But it truly is like, yes, Moses had to say yes. And Moses, you know, had to do these things in order for there to be this movement out. Mm -hmm. But God's leading this. Right. So this is God's, um, God has called Moses to be a part of this and equipped Moses to do it. But God is the one leading this whole show and the one who knows the whole um, goal of what's at the end, because Moses really doesn't, right? Right. Absolutely. Um, Even if God tells him, he doesn't necessarily get Mm -hmm. it or understand or see the vision. Mm Mm-hmm. So our good troublemaker today that we're going to talk about is also someone that felt uh, very certain that God had called her to a particular task, Harriet Tubman. Mm -hmm. And her task was very similar. It Mm -hmm. was taking people who were actually literally enslaved people and leading them into freedom. And she was even called Moses. Moses. You know, so as when they were putting up uh signs, because they they didn't think that a woman Mm -hmm. could do this. Mm. And so they had signs and had called her Moses and everybody was looking for a man that would be leading these slaves that would be calling them out of slavery into freedom. Right. And she was even, even a woman who had sustained this really bad head injury. Yeah. Um, She'd been hit in the head with an anvil um, that was not even aimed at her. It was aimed at somebody else. And she'd had these consistent visions Mm -hmm. and dreams after Mm -hmm. that happened to her. And she was absolutely certain that those visions were messages from God. Mm -hmm. And she was a woman of great faith Mm -hmm. and felt that it was her. She had to respond. Mm -hmm. Right. She Mm -hmm. had to follow what God told her to do. Mm -hmm. So here is um, a song from the the most recent movie about Harry. Harriet Tubman, which is a great movie. If you haven't seen it, you should. But here is um, this song I just love. It's beautiful. beautiful. Yeah. You're going to be singing it all week long. No doubt. And there are enough clips from the movie just to remind you the story of Harriet's life. Mm-hmm. Where is she? Come on back, peaceful. I'm gonna be free or die. I've been walking with my face turned to the sun. Weight on my shoulders, a bullet in my gun. Oh, I got eyes in the back of my head. Just in case I have to run I do what I can when I can While I can for my people While the clouds roll back And the stars fill the night That's when I'm gonna stand up Take my people with me Together I 
have made it 100 miles to freedom. Would you like to pick a new name to mark your freedom? Paratum. So I just recently saw the movie Harriet, um, you know, and was really moved about this, you know, idea that we've been talking about today with her, her understanding this calling as a, as a calling from God. Mm -hmm. Um, And to me, that really struck home when the first time that, you know, so she left and escaped and went to freedom and she stayed there for a while. And then when she felt the calling to go back, she was going back to free her spouse, Mm -hmm. you know, and then it turned out her spouse had already remarried and um, he was a freed um, black man. And Mm -hmm. so he had already remarried. And, um, and so then instead of just going home heartbroken, she pivoted and got her siblings. And -hmm. then a bunch of folks that had been hiding in the church waiting to be freed. And so all of a sudden, everything shifted for her, you know, yeah. whereas and it wasn't just about this one person. It became a mission for everyone right. to be able to gain this freedom. And remember, she stumbled, kind of stumbled into um, the Underground Railroad, which had already been set up before her. Yeah, which I didn't know until I watched the movie. Right. <laughs> Learned a lot. You know, there were people already laying the groundwork mm-hmm. uh, before mm-hmm. she got her freedom and then came back and and 
just became the the main conduct- conductor here on mm-hmm. the Underground Railroad. So, again, we see this figurehead leader um, mm-hmm. in Moses and in Harriet, but God is really the one leading uh the leaders to lead everyone else. And they still have Harriet, even though she was going by herself a lot of times, she still also had that support system. Right. And those networks of, you know, kind of what we talked about last week about Mm -hmm. you don't have to do this all on your own. And so there are different characters um, and and people that would help throughout the the story to be able to be a part of this movement of freedom. Right, right. And I think, too, one of the story things I love about this story is very much like the pillar of cloud and the pillar of fire, that there are people who represent freedom who were stationed yes. along the way to mm-hmm. to lead the way mm-hmm. now you also told me a story and reminded me about a story with her and her slave owner that really also connected to this idea of um of you know freedom and what kind of happens to the oppressor then right within that freedom so Tell us that narrative again. Well, this is um, Harriet said that she had been praying for her, the man who who owned her, that he would change, that his heart would be changed and that he would recognize the evil that that he was doing. I mean, he was a, not that slavery is good at all ever. It's not. Um, but he was particularly brutal. Mm-hmm. And she prayed that he would um, have a change of heart. Mm-hmm. And when it became clear to her that that was not likely to happen, she began for him to be killed, for him to die. Mm-hmm. And he did. He became suddenly ill and died uh, shortly after she started praying that. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so that was something that when, you know, when we kind of started then talking about that story and that narrative, it really brought this narrative home as well within Moses um, about this idea of um, do what has to die in order for freedom Mm -hmm. to come, Mm -hmm. you know? And so um, can we sometimes get caught up accidentally within celebrating the demise of, (laughs) you know, (laughs) if if you might understand this, if you're a college football fan. (laughs) So I was raised on the song, Don't Send My Boy to Texas. (laughs) There's a song about that. Oh, yes. It's a lullaby in my house. <laughs> I need to learn that song. <laughs> so, so OU has has a major rival in the University of Texas, but uh-huh. also within the state of Oklahoma, we got uh, the rivalry between OSU and OU. So here we have Pistol Pete and, and Boomer um, as Going the enemies, it. right? And so it is. We There is something that brings us together about fighting against an enemy and cheering on the, you know, for them to lose, for them to lose. Right. And we have, you know, we, we heard earlier within our worship time, um, the song that the system choir sang, that's, that's Miriam's song. That's Uh the song that comes after, um, what we read today after all of the, um, you know, Egyptians and Pharaoh and, and all of the people that were with Pharaoh after they get basically killed drowned Mm -hmm. in the red sea and there's this song that celebrates their freedom well and even in the so in the narrative in chapter 14 that we heard there's this repeated refrain that the egyptians everything they had was buried under the water and Mm -hmm. and then we have a whole nother chapter Mm -hmm. of the victory song Mm -hmm. between moses and miriam yeah Mm -hmm. And so as, you know, as you and I were kind of talking about that, we, we both kind of struggle with that mm-hmm. a little bit, mm-hmm. you know, um, you know, again, we invite wrestling uh-huh. <laughs> and invite wrestling hey, in scripture. My heart wants that slave owner to die. Mm-hmm. I'm sorry. Mm-hmm. It's true. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And so we were kind of trying to figure out, you know, how, how do we talk about that then? Mm-hmm. You know, because does somebody like a slave owner or a Pharaoh have to die? Mm -hmm. in order for freedom to be able to come, in order for what God wants to happen to to be able to come into the light. Sometimes does a person have to die? Mm -hmm. And so we we were wrestling with this together and kind of talking about how in, in my heart and mind, I do not believe that anyone is beyond redemption. Correct. That God's love is able to um, rectify Mm -hmm. uh, any wrong and, and even someone with evil in their heart Mm -hmm. um, is not beyond um, God's being able to redeem that person. Mm -hmm. Right. And that's Mm -hmm. what, that's what we believe Christ did. Right. Mm -hmm. But there's also the, the realization that that, that injury or the 
repeated injury is is real Mm -hmm. and it can't just be washed away. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So we kind of talked about then how to be able to separate the act of evil Mm -hmm. from the evil doer. Um, Because as as Jesus also invites us into this narrative, uh, you know, we we want to be able to remind ourselves that there's, you know, not no, there is nobody that is outside of God's redemption, as you just said, or Mm -hmm. that's our belief, right? Is that nobody is outside of God's redemption, but there is evil within the world Mm -hmm. and there are evil actions that we can even take, right? You know, and, and that we have to be able to stand up against that evil Mm -hmm. and to cheer for that evil to be killed. Right. So it doesn't necessarily mean that we're wanting perhaps the evil doer, but also it can get tricky. It can get tricky. It can get tricky. You know, I was, I was telling that um, I've been to Israel twice. Sarah mm-hmm. and I both have gotten the opportunity to go mm-hmm. to the Holy Land, and we've not seen all the same places because we went several years apart from yes. one another, right? Mm-hmm. One of the places that I went was uh, Magdala, mm-hmm. and there is a Catholic church at Magdala that is fairly newly constructed and in a, a beautiful sanctuary with mosaics of each of the disciples mm-hmm. um, along the sides of the sanctuary including Judas. Mm. And the guide, when we were there, said, you know, we don't know the rest of Judas's mm-hmm. story, um, mm-hmm. that, that judgment is not ours to make. Mm-hmm. But for many of us, you know, and that, that would be one of the evildoers right. that we would think about. And so, you know, how, how do we separate the evil from the evildoer then? How do mm-hmm. we how are we able as, you know, human people knowing that even as we both admitted, sometimes we want the slave owners to die. Mm-hmm. How, how do we kind of as people of God, how do we separate those two things out? Right. Well, and the real thing that we came down to is there aren't any easy answers to that. Nope. It's above <laughs> our pay grade. <laughs> <laughs> and I think that's part of, you know, as we kind of pray the Lord's Prayer together, um, you know, we, we are invited to be able to pray for those who have harmed us and mm-hmm. those who have trespassed against us. And I think that's part of what that prayer is inviting us to do is to be able to to do this movement mm-hmm. of separating out the evil from the evildoer and then to acknowledge that that is hard. It is. You know, it's especially if you have had harm done to you. Mm -hmm. Yes. And it's not that that, um, the, that the, the harm done is just washed away. Right. Right. That that we talked about reparations and reconciliation as a Mm -hmm. theological concept and how, Mm -hmm. you know, in order for relationships to be, to be rectified and reconciled, that there has to be some movement toward Mm -hmm. um, making reconciliation and making Mm -hmm. things right. One of the things that we, looking at the big picture of scripture and the Bible as a whole, we've seen through Genesis and this far in Exodus that God is um, taking these people that we've talked about and using them to continue to form a community Mm -hmm. of God's own covenant people. Mm -hmm. And we're going to continue for the next few weeks looking at Exodus and what happens to this community once they have left the oppression and the slavery in Egypt, and they're out in the wilderness and figuring out what God wants for them now and how they're gonna be a community together. And that is the seed of a community that then God uses throughout the rest of the narrative of scripture to bring more and more people into the community, Mm -hmm. including Egypt. That's right. And so there's this, you know, it all circles back together Uh again about being formed into this, you know, as the song said that um, you got to hear from the movie, a brand new home Mm -hmm. and kind of how that beloved community really is that, that there is a struggle between separating the evil from the evildoer. And, mm-hmm. you know, we acknowledge that that is hard. It's hard for us. Um, and it's a struggle. And mm-hmm. so, but that there, as we kind of look towards what are we being freed from, it's also what are we being freed to. Mm-hmm. And that for, you know, Harriet Tubman, I think one of the beautiful parts of her story is that when she would free slaves, and they would be able to go up north. They weren't then up north all by themselves. 
they started a new, new community. That's right. right. They, were they were freed into mm-hmm. a community that continued to work to freeing more slaves, mm-hmm. you know, and as you just said, the the Hebrews were freed into a community that was continuing to work then to bring in more people right. into God's kingdom, including those who had oppressed them. Including those who had oppressed them, right. And then in the New Testament, at the very end of the song, I don't know if you caught the very end she sings, I go to prepare a place for you. Mm-hmm. And that comes from John 14. And that's one of the passages that we read at funerals a lot, mm-hmm. where we, it says that, you know, God, God's house has many mansions and that we're all um, going to be invited in. Mm -hmm. And so that is the hope, I think, that anytime we see oppression and we're cheering for the defeat of the oppressors, the hope isn't that they will be completely annihilated. Right. It is that the evil will be annihilated Mm -hmm. and that the oppressor will become a part of the community and the community will, will be better for it. Yeah. You know, and we, as you said, that's above our pay grade, mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> certain mm-hmm. how that looks or, or how that plays out, but it is the hope mm-hmm. that we carry with us, right? You know, and it's the hope that we carry into communion as well. You know, we always talk about that every time that we come to communion, we are, we are surrounded by a great cloud of witnesses. You know, we're surrounded by each one of those disciples, mm-hmm. including Judas, mm-hmm. and that Judas is a part of this table that we're invited to to receive God's grace and gifts for, from and to be able to to continue to remind ourselves about how we are called to resist mm-hmm. that evil you know to call out that evil and to to seek on um, washing that clean mm-hmm. from any places that that we see ourselves as a part of as well. That's a part of that prayer of confession. Right, right. Because yeah, the evil does not, is not contained just to our enemies. It's, it's in here too. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. So as we receive these gifts today of, you know, grace and love and of peace and justice and of, you know, just mercy for everyone, um, we invite you to be able to, to take your bread and to take your cup and to be able to know that this is a gift that's given to you and to you Amen. and to everyone to be able to receive these, these graces from God. So let's pray together and thank God for all of that. God, we are so very grateful of the ways that you continue to welcome us into your table, to invite us to being a part of your beloved community and to call us out to be able to welcome even more so that all will be able to know that they are your beloved. So we pray that you will pour out your Holy Spirit on these gifts that you have given to us, on this bread and this cup, that as we receive these gifts, we will be transformed and we will be united and we will be together in ministry, not just with each other, but also with you so that we can go out and be a part of the new work that you're doing in bringing about the kingdom of God around and among us. So thank you for these gifts and thank you for the calling and thank you for the struggle. Amen. Amen. I invite you to receive these gifts now. Was attending 
his flock one day when a bush began to burn. And the Lord spoke to Moses from the burning bush and said the Pharaoh's using Harriet and Moses um, is leading communities consistently into new freedom mm. and providing a brand new home, right? Mm -hmm. And sometimes that looks unexpected, like our, our new home here uh, in virtual worship land. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> but we uh, want to remind you that we are a community that meets um, at other times as well. So while we worshiped here for this hour, we are also looking at how we can um, spend some time together in a small group discussion. We have tried that before. We took a break over the summer. We're getting ready to pick that back up. Thank you for responding to the poll. If you are, did not get a poll and you do not know what I'm talking about and you want to get constant communication from us about things that are happening for the 13th Street Worshiping Community, then just send us a message. Let us know you want to be on the 13th Street list and we'll be getting those details out. Starting next Sunday, we will be resuming a time to connect and to, to spend some time in um, discipleship formation and praying for one another um, after church. But it'll be different than what we've done before. So look for those details in an email this week. 
We also have some other opportunities for discipleship to being able to join together. So we wanted to remind you about our book club. Our next book is I'm Still Here. It's a wonderful book by Austin Channing Brown. So we invite anybody to be a part of that conversation and to be a part of growing within our faith, within learning more about you know, um, the, the movement with racial injustice as well. Mm -hmm. And then we also have some great opportunities for blessings. And so we'll be blessing y'all in just a, a second, but we wanted to be able to celebrate our pets as well. October is a time when we usually come together as a community to be able to thank God for the gifts that our pets bring us within our lives. And um, it's unfortunately not able to do that in person. So we're gonna have a drive-through pet blessing. And we're gonna do that at the end of September. And so if you'd like to be a part of this, you can just you know, get your pets together, put them in your car, come on down to the church on these days and times. And we can do, we'll be doing a blessing as you stay in the car with your pet. And so we'd love to be able to, to see you, to physically see you, but then to also be able to, to, um, to thank God for the gifts and the constant companionship that a lot of times our pets provide. Right. We are a faith community, and we, while we love for everyone to join us here in worship, there is a way to become a member mm -hmm. uh, and to be a part of, of giving to others what we are able to do here. So if you would like to explore membership with us and would like to talk about becoming a member of Boston Avenue United Methodist Church through 13th Street, then we invite you to do that. If you have never been baptized, um, then we would want to baptize you, and we can have a conversation with you about what that looks like, and we'll, we'll make arrangements to do that. If you've been baptized in any other Christian denomination, even if it's been a long time since you've been a part of a church, we don't re-baptize you. We just ask you some questions about how you plan to participate now in the ministries of this church. And you say yes, and you're a member. That's right. We invite you to be about the business of making good trouble. Mm -hmm. So if you are inspired by the story of the women that we've shared with you so far. Um, we hope that you are finding those ways that God is calling and leading you into particular trouble that will be of benefit to others, that will lead others into freedom, and that you experience joy mm -hmm. in a being a part of that mm -hmm. good tr troublemaking. If you're still looking for how it is God's calling you to make good trouble, keep your eyes and ears and mind and heart open for God's leading. And again, and Reverend Sarah and I are available to talk with you um, about any of the dilemmas that you may be having about where is your place to be stirring the pot. Mm -hmm. With that, may you go in peace. Amen. <laughs>